that it was enjoyable and you guys uh, had a good time and everybody's safe and happy and back at uh, work trying to survive a Monday after a spring break vacation. And for those that didn't get to go, hang in there. Summer's coming. And it is, uh, what, longer days now to, uh, to help you get out and about and have some fun with it. I know that for us, that means a return to the practice fields. I'm very excited to get out and see uh, Florida State's uh, remainder of uh, spring football get underway, as there are so many questions to be answered, so many things to talk about, and uh, position battles, of course, atop the list, but also as you vet the newer players and get a sense of how they're coming along, acclimating, how well they are responding to a new experience in many cases. And then also the young players, uh, which we told you about before this week-long break uh, and how well many of them are performing and how Florida State certainly, uh, as it pertains to guys like uh, Ezra Thomas and guys like that, like if you think about some of the hits that they had and some of the guys that came in here and right off the bat impressed us, we get to watch them further emerge And that's exciting. Florida State baseball last night, the marathon affair. It's so weird to think about because you guys, if you listen to me uh, consistently, you know I don't get wrapped up in a singular series. Or in the case of baseball, certainly I I never really get wrapped up in a result of a game. But I can't tell you how big it was for them to win that game, the second game of the doubleheader last night, to win the series. Because they're a flawed baseball team. They've got some things, obviously, wrong with them. Um, but if you can figure it out while winning series and winning games in what promises to be, uh, an Uber cluttered, uh, division and conference to begin with and position yourself, uh, from a standpoint of strength, uh, while you figure it out, uh, then obviously you give yourself some wiggle room and some margin for air, as opposed to dropping games like that one or home series, like they almost did yesterday so for them to get that win in a marathon game that featured more strikeouts than any human being should have to sit through between the two teams um is big it's big and it's big for their confidence it's big for positioning as i said within the standings it's big for potentially down the road strength of schedule all these things are impacted greatly oddly uh by by a series like that and again i don't want to overstate Uh, exactly what they are or are not just yet, but some things are rounding into form, some good, some not so good. And we'll have to, you know, monitor this closely this week to get UCF. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, I'm mainly now focused, obviously, on when we ever get around to playing Florida, but also, of course, uh, the weekend series every week now against ACC teams and having the opportunity to kind of see what Florida State is. What I'm noticing is that uh, a lot of the teams in this conference and throughout the country are flawed. They're, They're terribly flawed. Florida State's no different. There are some real strengths to this team. I would say that you have an emerging uh, competition as to who should sit where in that rotation. Uh, Because, again, you got another great start from your Sunday guy who's emerging more and more, perhaps from a pure stuff standpoint, Tom, uh, as a guy that is now no longer uh, really kind of the back end of your rotation, but a guy that may need to move up who's gaining confidence to couple with the stuff that he has. Yeah, what was interesting to me yesterday was I felt like for the first game of the doubleheader that maybe Hubbard was auditioning for the Friday job Mm -hmm. because Messick had slipped up and his ERA had had gone into the threes. Yeah. And maybe he was thinking that too. I don't know. He was terrible. You just can't know. Uh, Well, so the infield defense looked like they'd never seen a bunt before either. Yeah. Uh, Even though that was quite the slappy half inning from NC State. Sure. Still. Field the position, pick getting it up. out, pick it up, let's yeah. go. Yeah. Uh, they weren't all on earned runs. So uh, for you know Hubbard, I thought he had a chance to take the Friday job. Uh, I think it will stay the way it is, but look out for Ross Dunn. Yeah. Look out for him. Well, and I, I said to you early on in the season when we saw him where the moment might have been a little too big his first time out there. He was striking out the world, but he got himself in trouble with some walks. And, you know, you, basically his pitch count was through the roof through three innings and he had to come out. But you saw the stuff. He's a big, strong kid. And I think he has a diversity of stuff that in terms of the amount of pitches he can throw for a strike, I think he potentially could emerge as a Friday guy. I think that highly of him. And it's a good problem to have. On the other hand, you referenced some things that are problematic for this team, and that is uh, they're wildly inconsistent picking up the baseball again. Their defense is not good. Uh, they have games where they look good, like the first game, and then the second game they're they're awful. You know, it's it's just it's it's interesting to watch, uh, frustrating to watch is a better way of describing it. I think 
they also uh, swing and miss too much. So we're back to that again. Uh, a whole lot of swinging and missing. For that matter, though, they do that to everybody they face. Uh, they strike out the world, too. And so the games combined for way too many balls not put in play. Yeah, so we were looking at two things. At least I, I talked about this is the two barometers I'll be checking in at you know certain marks of the season. Number one was strikeouts four. And there was a good gap between us and and the opponents about a week ago, two weeks ago. It's um it's taking a turn for the worse. Yeah, there yeah. are up and downs in the season. And the other one was unearned runs allowed. And we were really healthy before we left for spring break. Since then, eh, it's much. gotten a little shakier. So yep. you know we'll see what happens in the next couple of weeks. But um, it looks closer to last year in those two categories than it was the Friday we left. Yeah. So what are they? Nineteen games into the season at thirteen and six. I'm not looking at it. I think that's right from what I remember last night. So if that's the case, then um, you know, in about another ten games, you'll be able to say, okay. You know, right, this right. is who they are and, and 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 the good and the bad and everything in between. Not to say that guys don't get better. I mean, you're, seeing, you're talking about done. I mean, guys are getting better. And in the oddity is the bullpen, which is ass yeah. up to this point, pure ass, uh, has a couple of emerging players that you get really excited about, which screams to me. Now, I'm a guy who, let's just say for a moment here, I'm going to be the fan. I'm going to, ooh, okay, here I am, fanny. Stop rolling certain guys out there to get their – lit okay well i thought in game two there was a concession um, there was a there was a concession in game two that yeah you listen yeah, you're just he, gonna have to wear it but they <laughs> they had to go right back and dip in without recording it out in the seventh inning i think it was right top of the seventh they're like yeah wear it we've got another game today Correct. let's go i'll live with that but then there's a certain guy that every but time that's galaro coming in you, you know yeah, yes yeah can yeah. we stop rolling his ass out there he's terrible right now terrible it's um there are a couple guys that I'd rather not it, see get the, that many opportunities. My my supposition is the guys who pitch well in the fall are not doing so now, and so yes, it is time to pivot. We are yep. we are nearing April, so you, you should have some answers there. Well, and you, you're seeing some guys really emerge and save Correct. the day. So that's the the thing that's yep. exciting is watching a couple of guys when given opportunities amidst real pressure, right? Uh, step up huge and put you in a position to win a game like that because they step up and they're asked to do more than they would ever be asked to do otherwise, two and three and four innings at a time. Uh, meanwhile, other guys are asked to pitch an inning and can't get anybody out ever. Right. right. Ever. Clean ever. Up the middle, double off the wall, oh, dong the other dong, way. Dong, dong, yeah. dong. Yeah. And you're just waiting on a dong. You're like, yeah. oh, I, I don't want to look because I know I'm going to see a dong. This is not good. Mm. That's how that looks. Every time you're like, oh, settling in. I'm sheepishly watching this inning for fear that a dong will emerge. Mm. And every time it does, you're like, well, there it is again. Damn it, man. Can I? Is this movie ever going to end? But as the guy who a couple of weeks ago, we had a fiery discussion about midweek losses. And hey, man, yeah, stop yeah, doing yeah. that. Because yeah. if you want, you know, a separator between a national 16 seed or top eight seed, yeah. you need to stop losing those midweek games. Well, we're still in position as we sit here with a lot of flaws to be a top eight national seed. So, so oh, far, uh, yeah, so no, no. far, Again, it's not bad. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay. This will be a fun watch. It'll be a fun watch. They, there's the potential for this team to be very good. There's a the potential for them to fall off a cliff. So um, it's going to be interesting. They've also. So I, can I check that real quick? Sorry. I, I, I just haphazardly threw that out there and I realized hearing it aloud, I'm wrong. There is no chance they fall off a cliff because they can, they're starting pitching. Right. So right. they may be average. They're not going to ever be bad. Their floor, yeah, yeah their yeah, floor yeah, is yeah, average yeah. to above average. Right, right, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I just wanted to clarify that because I, I, I realized how that sounded when I said. It. No, that's fair. I forgot what I was going to say. I'll come back <laughs> to it later. I just, I want to get it out oh, there. They're not going to be bad. I know. Uh, the, uh, the hide skin is, is certainly, um, you know, garnet and hue. They, they've definitely embraced that. Mm -hmm. Did you notice Ferrer's, um. Oh. Rounding of the bases. I yeah. mean, he's not the only one. Terrell has done it. Oh, I mean, yeah. we've, we got a lot of guys who will. Um, pound their chest and let you know what just happened. But every single member of the Wolf Pack <laughs> who was standing in the infield or the outfield, if you look at that walk off home run replay, yeah, they all turn around and stare at Mr. Ferrer as he takes every step and they're taking notes. Oh, now yeah. I I don't think you can hit somebody intentionally in college baseball. Well, you can. But if we play them in the ACC tournament, oh. I would say look out first at bat because every single member. Of the of the on field group of nine, yeah, was staring at well, him every step as he's shouting at them and pointing at them. I'm like, that, my man, that goes back to Terrell, though. I, that goes I, back to Terrell. I, I know yeah. Terrell did it too. Oh, he didn't just do it. He threw the I, bat at their dugout yeah, and looked at him. Yeah, there's. I'm telling you, if this isn't 
the garnet and gold that we love, right? You and I, we're, we're not, they're not likable. They're not likable because of those kind of antics. You'd say clown show. When you, you're going to strike out 28 times in a game and you're going to do that in a walk-off situation, that's a, that's a clown show move. We need to grow up a little bit there. It's collegiate. It's 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 actually part and parcel to collegiate baseball across the board. I watch a little other college baseball. I'm, I'm not. I don't mean yeah, that. I don't, I don't like mean, those teams either. Hold on. I don't mean that chidingly. I'm saying it's a clown show. Is right. College baseball has morphed across the board into that kind of thing, and oddly, our embracing it later, as right. opposed to many others, is is in a weird way. I think necessary for whatever reason bravado wells up from, from that, that these kids embrace. Yeah. I, I think it's a little bit of you and me being old, but also rightly pointing to that and criticizing that. It, sure. Well, Hey, listen, first of all, let me say they are mine and I love them because they wear the garnet and the gold. So, so we're good on that front. It's not like I don't like this team to the point where I wouldn't root for of them. Course now that's nuts. That's absolutely nuts. You know who they are? The 86 Bro Mets. The Brooks Kepka. Oh, wait a minute. Brooks isn't making putts and walking into Justin oh, Rose eye to eye uh, going. Oh, well, no golfer does that. You'd yeah. have to be. I'm talking the equivalency, <laughs> the douchebaggery of the blonde hair and all the things that he does on the regular. That's, that's what they are. That's what they are. But uh, you still love. They're, they're a louder version of that. They're <laughs> yes. a much louder version of that. No, because listen, I mean, Tiger was uh, demonstrative, right? So it, it wouldn't be unprecedented for somebody who loved Tiger like Brooks to be demonstrative. But my man will sink an eagle putt, and he'll barely acknowledge the fans. Like, these guys, if they hit a single in the 11th, they're like, ah! Oh! it's just like, all right, all right uh, that's I got you. Yeah, that's, it's weird. It, well, what happened is there's an entire generation of athlete that was rewarded for making a layup and going, ah! After a layup right, right. on a game on a Tuesday night, fifth game of the season, and they're three and two. And they scream after an and one. That an entire generation of player grew up on that. And every commercial made by ESPN features somebody saying, let's yeah. go and screaming like an idiot. Um, that's, I mean, that's, that's every time a play is executed properly, somebody screams, let's go right. and yells to the top of their lungs. It's sort of the fake silliness that russell wilson expresses or go back to uh we, we go on and on there are any number of mr players. unlimited <laughs> don't do it don't do it it makes me want to run out of the room i want to leave when you do stop don't do it <laughs> i can't stand it mm. can you oh let's get to something else which is the ncaa tournament and how you should not bet on it Go ahead. Can I offer one more thing? Because you'll <laughs> laugh at this. Okay. A mutual uh, friend of ours uh, watching mm -hmm. both softball and baseball yesterday, just back and forth. And, um, you know, there was a stolen base or something for the softball team. We get on third base. I think it was a, a missed throw into the uh, on a steal attempt. So we go to third. And on third base, our player does like the crane, like a crane dance. And it's just like ridiculous. And the guy goes, and to his credit, he goes, you know what? I can handle that a lot better because our baseball team would be pelvic thrusting right now, which is just a little much. And I was like, yeah, you know, that's a good point. There's like silly, and then there's, oh, my. Yeah, and we're a little bit on the oh, my, more than the silly department. Can I do the thing where I, for, for all of us temporarily to wave the, the ACC flag? Can I do that? Can I, as I segue to the NCAA tournament? Because when it's. Wave it. Yeah. Oh, I'll wave the hell out of it now. because. When it's convenient, we should note it. When it's not, we should make fun of it. So I'm going to embrace. Well, maybe at uh, 500 in the conference, we should have gotten in. Apparently. Apparently. All these sorry this, saps. Well, I would just tell you that this is uh, murderer's row to get through the season at 500 is a remarkable accomplishment that was not properly, uh, I think, analyzed and rewarded uh, because clearly – in typical fashion, the selection committee uh, undervalued the strength of the mighty ACC. The conference is eight and two in the NCAA tournament, Tom, and three of the five teams are headed to the Sweet 16. And if Notre Dame hadn't choked in the last two minutes of their game, it'd be four of the five headed to the Sweet 16. Uh, looks like the best conference in America. 
Just saying. Yeah. If you want to do the thing where a tournament one-off result tells you everything you need to know about the previous 30-plus games played by any of the teams in the NCAA tournament. So here's the solution to make it a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. Uh, move the ACC Big Ten Challenge to February <laughs> because then the committee would have a better idea of relative conference strength and what these teams are because we define – everything is defined by what happens in that ACC Big Ten Challenge for those two conferences early on in the season. Outside of maybe uh, a few other non-conference results that are like the elite tournaments that are, are separate, the conference ones. It's like Ken Palm reflects it. The net system reflects it. Yeah. Every system. It's like they buy into whatever they learned in that non-conference meetup in early, December, early. beginning of December, mind you. But let's do those things later in the year so that maybe, just maybe, well, we don't have to have a team win 13 games in this conference to make it to, you know, an 11 seat. Well, I'm going to do this, though. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point out how silly all of this is, because if we're just going to play the game where whatever narrative was started before the season began and must be played to in its talking points week to week, no matter the results or only utilizing early season results and then finding a way to morph that to the aforementioned narrative, um, then, then really we're in for this sort of result every time a tournament doesn't go according to the seeding because that's exactly what happens. Right now, the ACC looks like a bunch of world beaters. The Big 12 looks like the best conference in America. It might be. I don't know. They've lived up to the hype, certainly. The two most overrated conferences, based on tournament results, are clearly the overhyped Big 10. And good God, the SEC, sorry ass. Thanks. You get six teams in, and you got one going to the Sweet 16. Yeah, what happened to Bruce Pearl? Yeah, so there it is, right? Well, what happened to Bruce Pearl was a huge raise. He didn't care. He's, a, he's in the middle of kiss my ass on Main Street moment. It's an earlier exit to the beach for that fat ass. He's set. So. Listen, th th this happens all the time with the tournament. There have been years where the ACC was clearly the best conference in America over the course of a long season and then had a bad tournament, and all of a sudden, everyone's see, the ACC sucks. And then other times, uh, that has a bad year, and then the ACC would tie Is that Earl Tiger, Woods? Was, I think that was Earl. Yeah, somewhere in there. And then other times, uh, you know, there's been a conference that had a relatively down campaign for a variety of reasons. Paint Confluence the picture, Tiger. <laughs> I'll be in the hotel room, but go paint the picture on the green. So – there's that, and then that team goes, and then a bunch of teams go off in the in the NCAA tournament. Matchups suit them. Somebody gets hot from the field and goes crazy. A guy who's shooting 20% from three hits 10 in a game, and the next thing you know, they move on. Like, that's what happens in one-off tournaments. I'm, I'm not saying either. I'm just saying it's pretty funny to watch all of this play out the way that it has. But I will warn you, which I did both on the college sports book and on this show before I left for Montana, the NCAA tournament, Boy, I'll tell you what, that is not where you make your money. That's not where you make your money. It's that a lot of that is luck in terms of betting. A lot of that is pure luck. And it, sight lines in, in barns that right. they never played never in before. Never played in before. Yeah. It's bizarre. It's just you watch this thing play out, you're like, okay, look, cool story, good for St. Peter's. They're not as good of as 58 teams that are in this tournament, but there they are. They found the magic for a night, and they knocked off a two-seed, and then they got Murray State, which whatever, and they're in the Sweet 16. So, you know, I, I, it's fun. I love the tournament. It was great. What I got to see of it this week when I was out of town, which I did a lot of, actually, because we were off the slopes usually early evening in time to kind of settle in and cozy up to the bar and have a cold one and watch uh, as we kind of thought back on the day of skiing. We watched the basketball and had a great time. But it did. it, it made me laugh. It just made me laugh. I mean, that first game, Notre Dame Rutgers, right? So I've got the under of that game. Oh, thanks for the double overtime, oh, guys. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I had uh, well, yeah. I had Irish minus a point or half a point. And that was, I was like, man, you're going to make me stay up. Yeah, you're well, make me stay up this whole way. We've got this under under control here. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the double overtime. Well, okay. So the, the the trend I've learned is is you're safer to bet unders across the board because of the lack of comfort level with the court and yeah. the settings mm -hmm. and the sight lines for the teams that you know are shipped in from different parts of the country. I'm like, oh, it, this is what Des Moines looks like. Right, We're from Long right, Beach. Right. Um, but there were just a couple of, of real clunkers that you could have never seen coming. If you look at efficiency metrics across the board, uh, Loyola Chicago barely scored a point a minute out of nowhere. What the hell is that? Iowa, Iowa was in a lot of people's final fours. Oh my God, they couldn't hit the broadside of a barn. It was amazing. Yeah, a lot of teams did that. Colorado State did that. They started well against Michigan, and then nothing, absolutely nothing after that. Just so many terrible offensive performances that it, you know, it just blew up a lot of brackets. Most brackets are not standing anymore.
Uh, zero nationally uh, are standing. Uh, yeah. There, there are none as usual. No perfect ones. Yeah, yeah. no yeah. perfect. Brackets. I mean, like, yeah. people are down. Like, I've got one team left in my <laughs> final four, and well, that's the routine. A lot of people had an emerging Kentucky squad going into the tournament to go very deep, if not win the whole thing. Well, then, thanks for playing. Grand opening, grand closing. It's a lot of fun to watch that play out. If, if you're actually not putting together a bracket, it's really fun. I actually am finding, and I sound like a curmudgeon, that I enjoy this tournament more when I don't fill out a bracket. Now, I like to gamble. So if you say to me, hey, I'm going in at the bar with, you know, Larry, John, Bill, Terry, you guys want to put together? Yeah, sure. I'll throw 20 bucks into that and have some fun with it. But in terms of seriously gambling, like I like to seriously gamble on golf, I like to seriously gamble on football, I like to seriously gamble on college football, I like to seriously gamble on the NBA, I like to seriously gamble on baseball. You really can't do it for the NCAA. I like tournament. to seriously gamble on NFL preseason. Yeah, I like to seriously, seriously gamble, gamble on, any on thing. UFC soon. If I find an angle on uh, swimming, I'll take it. But, you know, what I'm saying is, you can't do it with the NCAA. WrestleMania. <laughs> hey, the all-time great Gene Deckerhoff announced over the weekend, or it was learned over the weekend, that he's going to retire. I have some thoughts on that next. Jeff Cameron, show 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. Our friends at ISF work hard to help their clients solve the future. ISF is an integrated IT and management consulting firm located right here in Tallahassee, serving clients all across the country. With the new year upon us, ISF reminds you to create a clear strategy, optimize your process, and modernize your technology to meet all your goals in 2022. For more information, visit ISF.com. That's ISF.com. ISF, solving the future. Hi, I'm Stephanie. Some people call me Paul because I work at Paul's Termite and Pest Control. Everyone that works here will proudly answer to the name Paul. One of the things I love about my job is that I get to help people fix their problems every day. If you have pests in your home and you're like 99.9% .9 of the people I deal with, you want them gone not tomorrow, but right now. It always puts a smile on my face to hear the reaction of a customer when I tell them we'll have someone out there in a couple of hours. At Paul's, I get the privilege of making your environment safer and more healthy for your family and pets. And because Paul's provides a same-day service guarantee with minimal weight, we get to begin the process right after I receive the call. If you live in Leon County and call us by noon, Paul's Pest Control will be out by 5, guaranteed. We're a local company, and it's our mission to help keep Tallahassee area customers comfortable and free from the problems that pests bring. And we do so with treatments that are friendly to our environment. For the elimination of termites and any other pest. And a greener lawn, too. Call Paul's. We'll get them all. Real Talk 93 wants you to save some money and fill your tummy at foodiestakeout.com. Text the word foodies to 850-230-9456 and get 10% off your order from select local restaurants like Jerry's Midtown Cafe, Horizons Bar and Grill, El Jalisco, Metro Deli, and many more. Text foodies to 230-9456. That's 230-9456 to save some money and fill your tummy. Clean, renewable energy means fresher air, healthier residents, new green jobs, and a stronger, more resilient community. How we get there is up to you. Share your input today to help shape the Tallahassee of tomorrow. Take the clean energy survey at talgov.com. Applications, onboarding, payroll, termination. Business owners and managers, you know these are the processes that take away too much time from what you do best. But what if there was a locally owned, responsive solution that would charge you a fraction of the big national payroll companies? Sound too good to be true? It's not. North Florida Payroll Services is Tallahassee owned for nearly 15 years. And in that time, their prices have never changed. The reason North Florida Payroll Services can do that? Exceptional customer service that constantly evolves with the latest technology. From application to termination, for turnkey service for your payroll and HR services, trust a Tallahassee expert and save yourself time and money. North Florida Payroll Services, online at NorthFloridaPayroll.com. Every great construction project, whether it's a new addition or renovation, starts with a plan. At T-Spark, we are excited when our clients contact us to assist with that plan. Through our team of architects, draftsmen, engineers, we can help you with your project's planning and design, potentially saving costs in the long run. Whether you have a residential or commercial project, we look forward to working with you. Call us today or visit us at tsparkconstruction.com. License number CGC 1525336. 
We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout, resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. The Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. of uh fun and, and and rejuvenation and i am and i'm ready to go and i'm excited i mentioned before the break the great gene decker off uh we became aware uh decided to uh to hang it up i'm, I'm kind of surprised you know tom we just saw gene at the coaches luncheon there at the uh before spring football and- yeah he scored uh, an empanada just before it started <laughs> and he goes timing is everything as he sat down <laughs> um we'll, we'll we'll talk about this in a second uh first though a reminder Spring is here. It's beautiful outside. The weather's warming up. You're going to be wearing less clothes, guys and gals. we got to get it together. Got to start looking right. Sign up at Orange Theory Fitness today. First class, always free. It will pay immediate dividends. You'll feel good. You'll feel better. You'll feel locked in and committed pretty quickly because it's science-backed and based. That interval training methodology, which is used in really most sports these days, will show immediate impact on your body type, but also your overall fitness. And uh, once you get a glimpse of what's possible, you'll want to go back. You'll want more life. That's what Orange Theory Fitness provides. Orange Theory Fitness, first class, always free. In fact, new members, if you sign up uh, with that first month being free, you also get a heart rate monitor. You're good to go um, for that month. So make sure uh, you take advantage of the opportunity and, uh, and, and get started as we get set to uh, to be outside a little bit more often, which I'm really excited about, orangetheoryfitness.com. All right, so much to catch up on. NFL free agency, the NCAA tournament again. Also, uh, of course, spring football getting back underway. We already tackled baseball. I mentioned a moment ago, Gene Dagaroff, I want to revisit that now. Uh, I was surprised to hear that news, Tom, and I was in the in the midst of flying back and traveling when that all went down and really didn't have an opportunity to kind of weigh in other than a quick tweet. Uh, which you can't do it justice. I saw yours. It made me laugh because I remember that exact moment that we were sitting there and that happened. Uh, you, me, and Corey Dower, and um, how hard we laughed at that with the Krispy Kreme's donuts, Krispy Kreme oh, donuts. Man. Yeah, it's it's all time great. I never asked or got clarification from him where the hell that came from. They weren't a sponsor that he was doing live reads for. There were no donuts, and there were no donuts. Yeah, so I I don't know. Yeah, so it was weird. Um, it, but. I, I want to do this really quickly. Uh, Gene is, uh, he's a legend. There's not much more I can add to it that people don't already know and or have stated publicly. People with more influence, certainly than me or better stature than me in the broadcasting world. Uh, so I don't want to put myself alongside uh, Gene Dekaroff in that way, in terms of his relationship to FSU and being the voice for as long as he has and the connection with so many alumni and fans across the country, whether it be Florida State or the Tampa Bay Buccaneers or any number of other things, certainly across sports, you name it, right? But I will relate to you about the man that I know and how fortunate I've been. When I first broke into the business, 97, 98, 98, really, I get started. And one of the coolest things to happen for me, I had only at this point, I'd never met Gene Deckeroff. I'd only heard him because of my dad. You know, he would play Florida State uh, football games. In the 80s, a lot of times the games weren't on television in St. Petersburg. So he would, you know, and the Knowles were always playing Saturday nights at Doak, right? That was the famous thing. So we would listen to the broadcast. And later on, you know, just time and again over the years, we would listen to Florida State broadcast. And of course, I, you know, it's synonymous, Gene Deckeroff. Well, 
one of the things that I always thought was interesting is I get in, I get an opportunity to get into radio and I start doing radio. And then eventually I leave this one small station and I, and I start with clear channel in Tallahassee and my show was on, you know, this at six, yeah, o'clock, good company, good company. six o'clock, six o'clock in the morning. Right. So I was doing radio at six o'clock AM and I, I was still trying to find my way. I didn't know nothing about nothing. And Lee Bowen, former play-by-play announcer for Florida State Baseball, uh, was my boss. And we would he would sit down and we would talk. We'd go over each day's shows. And then as kind of a way to ingratiate uh, me to other people in the business or people that I was going to have to interview or talk to while covering Florida State Athletics – and really anything local, Florida a and at that time, also the Tiger Sharks, uh, as well as, you know, any number of other entities, whatever it was going to be, right? TCC, you name it, right? He would he would, he would say, hey, this week we're going to go meet this coach or we're going to meet this coach. And I remember the first time I met Mike Martin. Oh, it was a big deal. We went in to sit down before the season started, sat at the table. Mike Martin didn't know me from Adam. I didn't know him, but I knew who he was, obviously, and I was overwhelmed and 11 was great. The first time that... I ever got to meet Gene Deckerhoff was kind of unexpected. Back then, we used DAT tapes and other mini CD recorders. And Gene did so many commercials for Clear Channel and other type broadcasts for them, promotional things like that, that he would drop off the coach's show that he did with Bobby Bowden or anybody else that he did a coach's show with at about 5.30 in the morning, 5 a.m. in the morning, to Clear Channel, they had a side door, still there. Uh, you know, the one you and I went to, best Jeff Horn's office. Mm-hmm, yep. So, yep, I was I was told at the last second, hey, Gene Deckeroff's going to be here, and he's going to drop off these tapes, and we're going to use them later in the day. Make sure you're at the door. Nobody told me it was going to be part of my gig. So I was so excited, like a little kid. I was like, this is cool as hell. I get to talk to Gene Deckeroff over coffee every morning, or, you know, at least a couple times a week. And that's how I got to meet him. And he was, I, I want to say, in character at 5 o'clock in the morning, just the way he is at 9 o'clock at night. Well, he, did he come in for coffee or did he just drop the tapes? Sometimes. Most there, of the time he would drop the tapes. There you go. Yeah. But that that was him. And he would hand it to you. And I would open the door and I would see him and I would be like, that's Gene Deggeroff. And it took like a good year every time I saw him to, for me to get past that, where I would just think, Oh, that's, that's Gene Deckeroff. I, I I would say that to myself as I'm walking back down the hall. Like, that's Gene Deckeroff. Cool. Eventually, I was like, oh, hey, Gene's here. Cool. Over the years, we had conversations. And it was always, obviously, it would be about sports or it'd be about whatever it might be. Um, and he was so gracious, so kind. And every now and again, he would just posit or offer up uh, a word of wisdom or advice. But he certainly never, I mean, even as the show got popular, and then I may have said some things that were pretty controversial that maybe he didn't agree with or whatever it might be, never changed, never changed at all. It was always sort of, you got to do what you do. You got to be honest with your audience. I may disagree with you. I'm not going to hold that against you personally. That's fine. And we would have honest dialogue together. I'm not saying Gene and I hung out a ton. Certainly Tom Block hung out with Gene a lot more than I did on the road, and others have spent a lot more time with Gene. But I have certainly got to know Gene very well over the years. And he's just such an honest and candid and kind and forthcoming person. And um, he genuinely roots for people. I mean, I want to say that. Like anybody, like you get these kids come on the beat for the first time. Uh, maybe they're working for the FSV or something. Maybe they're Maybe they're still in college. They're cutting their teeth, their feet, you know, they're just getting their feet wet, whatever it might be. They're in awe. They're learning. They make mistakes. Gene treats everybody equally. And here he is, a legend. And I don't, I assume most people probably think that's true, probably know that. But I'm telling you, it is. I've watched it happen over the course of 20 plus years that I've been in broadcasting, specifically here. He's always been that way. Yeah, the thing I'd say is um, I mirrored him for one weekend. It was Florida State, NC State here. It was Jimbo's final season, I think. And uh, we had lost the game on Saturday afternoon. And that was the one where they said that they were going to double uh, Chubb, right? You know, and, and, and uh, didn't. Yeah, Trickett's like, we're going to make sure we chip. We do all these didn't things. Do any and of it was that. singles all day. And then he spit on the logo at the end. Yeah. Yeah. So when bad things happen to him. That's okay by me. But uh, I'm in the airport to fly to Minneapolis because I'm going to cover Buccaneers Vikings the next day, working with Joe Bucks fan. And there's Gene. Wouldn't you know? He had a police escort from Doak <laughs> to get to the did. airport. Yeah. I didn't go to the game that day. 
because I had to get through security. And he came uh, w- within the police escort. Also was Anthony Becht, and nice um, guy by the way, who is yeah. a giant, big oh, ass dude, man, big ass dude. Yeah. That is a huge human. He needed to be in first class. Yeah, like he couldn't fit He's anywhere a monster, else. Yeah, and Rocky Boyman was there too. And so they rode together, and they were just yucking it up as they were going in. And I'm I'm walking through. Gene recognizes uh, on the second leg of the flight. He's like, "Oh, wait a minute, how you doing?" But he was talking <laughs> to everybody about the Bucks game, and, and Anthony had played for Tampa. So of course, like, it's going to be a tough haul this weekend in Minneapolis. I'm like, "Well, they've just been talking. Why do you have to sound so proper?" But that's Gene. Yeah, he's always oh, in the mode. Always is. in the mode. Yeah, and and that's an exhausting trip. My point, yeah, actually, the overriding point is to do that for you know decades. To be on a call on a Saturday, and if you can swing it, sometimes he misses an FSU game because he'll cover the cover the box like the London trips and things like that. I remember he left at halftime one year to go to London. Mm-hmm. How exhausting that is! I know it's two days a week, but it's two days of hell. And then sometimes he's calling basketball games like two days later. That's just a lot, and he's been doing that forever. That's really tough. Forty so plus years. That's off to yeah. him. I, I think too. Um, one one final thing on this. And he's such a, a just again a genuinely kind guy uh he's the last of kind of an old school broadcasting type archetype there there aren't going to be too many more guys who sound like that now there's a part of me and i i have to be careful how i word this there's a part of me that says that the industry has grown up a little bit and we're no longer forcing guys into a set of parameters that you have to follow and abide by you can be polished and he is certainly, he's capable of being very polished. You can be a, a part of who you are and not a, a caricature. But the old school guys had to sound a certain way. And Gene is that. He is the embodiment of that, right? He sounds like those broadcasters that he probably probably emulated um, growing up. Like the idea of a broadcaster. And I find that fascinating. I, I do. Uh when those guys are gone, they're gone. And so you take time to kind of take a step back and you think, well, there's good and bad in the industry progressing. Some of the bad is uh, self-evident. We could find any number of examples of that. But some of the good is also very obvious as well as they break away from that mold. And Gene is really kind of the last of a certain kind of broadcaster. He is he is a, a dying breed. Yeah, the um, the unfortunate thing was I figured the announcement meant that he was going to call this fall. I thought so, know? too, yeah. And then it's like the spring game. I was like, that's where I, my breath was taken away. I'm like, you mean like a month from now? That's it? That was actually kind of tough as an old fan because I I was much like your dad was. In the 90s, when, when I was, mm-hmm. you know, lucid enough to remember football games, Florida State was pretty much on every week. There would be, sometimes yeah, it'd be like yeah. ESPN2. It'd be on pay-per-view if they were playing like Duke or something. But outside of a Duke game or an out-of-conference week two game, You'd find them on ESPN2, ABC, wherever. But we would always turn it down and play Gene. And we liked it because it was about a half second ahead. Only about a half second. But right. it was enough where, like, as the quarterback's throwing, you're like, is Completed. it? You're like, it's yeah, caught! Yeah, and you're yeah, like, yeah. yes! Yeah, yeah. All right, this is great news. Uh, but it was first Florida State for me. Even though I grew up in Tampa, that's where I heard him first. And it was jarring. Like, he's still going to, you know, finish out his current contract with the Bucks, which is great. So he's not totally gone from my listening habits, but... I, I thought, damn, man, you don't get a send off tour this next fall. That's well, tough. Yeah. And I, you know, we'll get a chance to talk to Gene. We'll see Gene here soon as spring practice gets underway again this week. And I'm looking forward to talking with him. And I, um, I thought about reaching out via text and, and saying something. Then I thought, no, I'd rather talk to him face to face, but it, as long as this is something that he is absolutely ha- he's chosen to do and 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 in for whatever reason right he just decided that it's too much to handle both I, he's going to walk away I did a little bit of digging uh because I mean anything you know anything like this like an abrupt retirement you, get, you you're going nervous, hey yeah. hey I hear it is totally it was time kind of a thing well, not not you know a bad thing That's really good to hear because I think he'll be even better as a broadcaster for the Bucks this year um, it's just taxing uh, it, it, to do all that he does uh, really quickly. And I'll only address this because we got some emails. Somebody said something on the thread. I saw there was a thread on WarChain as well. So I will address this. Uh, any of you that have mentioned my name for that job, uh, I can't tell you what a, uh, a nice compliment that is and how flattering that is. Guys, th- that is a job that I think is suit in my personal opinion. 
I think that job is so suited for the likes of Tom Block, who is such a professional play-by-play announcer. He is, I think he's exceptional at what he does. He's a friend of mine. So in the interest of transparency, I'm telling you, I'm biased. I like Tom a lot. I also think he's really good at what he does. And I think he's perfectly suited for that job. Tom Block, in my opinion, should be number one on the list of people that they're considering. I think it's a no-brainer, personally, right, right. that it would segue to Tom Block. I believe that. To answer for those of you who had said, hey, would you like to do it? Is that something that you'd be up? Listen, I, I a few years ago, I had a conversation with somebody, let's put it that way, in which my name was kicked around a little bit for a possibility of, down the road. OK, not 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 that I was going to get the job, just I was going to be somebody they would talk to amongst others. Right. And I remember thinking this is surreal. I don't even know what to say about this. Do I think I could be a play by play announcer? I've done play by play before in other sports. Could I do that? Yes. Do I think I'm anywhere as uh, professional and ready uh, to do something like that uh, in the same sense that Tom Block is? No, 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 no. I don't think that. So. If that were something, and I don't even know that I would be very good at it. I don't know that I would like it. I know that Tom Block will be good at it. I know he will. Could you handle the filters? Yeah. I, see, that's the funny thing. Uh, how many years? Are you of, sure? Oh, easily. Okay. Easily. Right. Well, you know, you work with me, man. I mean, there are days I come in here and I just, we go from one second talking a certain way to getting on the mic and. No, no, I understand. No, I don't mean about FCC violations. Oh, I you're talking about, about taking things personally when a guy drops a ball. Like would it be would would catch the ball be one of your catchphrases that people know in the stands? No, no, because I would know who I was working for. I got a taste okay, by yeah, the way. That's... By the way, I got a taste of that. <laughs> I did, by the way, FSU's official pregame show many years ago, um, with the late Monk Bonasor throughout the state, and I learned a very valuable lesson. Uh, I was critical of the team, uh, in particular, an offensive line coach, a uh, previous offensive line coach and their ineptitudes. And we would field questions throughout the state. I got a question from a guy in Ocala. I'll never forget it. He was as fed up clearly as I was, uh, in watching our offensive line. And he asked a question and I answered it very succinctly and directly. We went to commercial break. Lee Bone was producing the show and Monk Bonasort looked at me stunned and said, what are you doing? And I said, what do you mean? And he goes, you can't, you can't do that. You, you can't do that. I said, what? I go, we suck. We can't block anybody. You know that. He goes, yes, you and I both know that. You can't say that, man. We're working for the. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. So like, you know, a Jacksonville state level loss or even something more neutral. Let's say we progress as a program, an unexpected loss to wake in a year where no. maybe in the Atlantic Again. and, and let's just say that you were in that position and you've got to do the coaches show on a Monday night. I could do it, man. I could do it professionally. No, because you, there's a mindset you would have to, I'm not saying I'm not lobbying for the job. I, I want know. Tom I know Block to get the no. job. I want Tom Block to get the job. I'm, what I'm saying is that you can put on a certain, like you could, you could wear a mindset. You can say to yourself, I'm going in this broadcast booth to work for Florida state university. It is not my job in this situation to be critical. I'm not being an, an analyst. Right. I'm not being an analyst, nor am I being paid for my opinion in that role. Right. Here I'm paid for my opinion on a daily basis. If I didn't do that, I wouldn't be doing my job. And that role is passionate as I am about Florida State. I would understand I'm not an analyst in that role. It's not my job. I'll tell you the guy dropped the ball. Second and 10, that's an unfortunate drop pass. Third and ten. I don't if know. you kept it to that, that's an unfortunate drop. I'd be, oh, I'd be impressed. I, I mean, there would be emotional calls. William, and, we both know that's well, ridiculous. Well, first of all, <laughs> if I was working with my dear friend William Floyd, I do think that might be a recipe for disaster. We've known each other since we were twelve, and we know everything about each other's personality. I do think we would probably become too fanish. And yeah, yeah we, we would wear our emotions. He already wears his emotions on his sleeve. See, I, yeah. My thing is in a situation like a coach's show and you working for the university, which makes me kind of gag inside a little bit. Right. Well, but, I don't currently. So don't yeah, worry about that, it. that's what I'm saying. You know, but I would love to compare your poker face with Jimbo's during press conferences. You know, coach, how about the offensive line this week? 
you know, your thoughts there. Or if a caller asked that or whatever, we've got a question from, uh, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. Pasco. Know Cal. Yeah, Pasco yeah. County. Yeah. They want to know about the offensive line. Like, I'd, I'd be reading you, facial expressions. Like, you oh, know yeah. me so well that yeah. you would also. I worry. Well, but also, you know, my facial expressions and you're forever pointing out to me like, well, that guy now knows you hate him. And I'm like, what? And you're like, oh, it was written all over your face as you answered the question. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't ever notice that. Well, I think my yes. face betrays me in that hate way. Hate the question more than hate. Yeah. Correct. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I don't personally hate a stranger, <laughs> but, but yes, it might very well be where I'm like, oh, oh, yes. So your right. question was yeah. what? Yeah. Yeah. That's my point. Yeah. Where no, I, I think, I, uh, I think, uh, Mr. Front Row Knowles is, uh, oh, Thomas. He's so perfectly suited for it. And he's got enough snark in him, too, that he'll keep you on your toes. Uh, I yeah. think he held back from that a little bit when he was filling in for Gene out of respect for the chair, that it's not his. You know, when he would take a job when Gene was doing mm -hmm. yeah. London or, or sometimes basketball games when it's, you know, the yeah. schedule's all over the place. But I think if he took the, the job, there would be enough dry in there, enough dry humor that you go, ooh, all right. Got a little something to uh, it. I hope he gets it. I wish him well. There are other good broadcasters out there. I don't want to besmirch anybody or overlook anybody. I uh, just uh, Tom's a friend. I've always thought he was really good at what he does. He's smooth. Um, the the ins and outs of the breaks, he'll handle like a pro's live reads, pro, live reads all that stuff. Yeah, no problem there. He's an old through and through. Uh, I just not that that's required for you to do the job, but you know he he'll he'll do a fine job. I think he'll he's a good choice. That's my personal opinion. Jeff Cameron, show ninety three three Real Talk Radio War Chant TV. Local news now. A man from Mayo died in a single car crash Saturday night around 12.57 a.m. after driving off I-10 in Leon County. On March 19th, a 49-year-old man was driving his pickup truck on I-10 in the area of mile marker 209, according to Florida Highway Patrol. For an unknown reason, the man drove off the roadway onto South Crest's shoulder and his side impacted a tree. The man was pronounced dead on the scene. A crash involving a motorcycle injured one Sunday night in Leon County, according to a spokesperson with the Leon County Sheriff's Office. Deputies were called to the 2900 block of Rollaway Trail just before 9 p.m. Sunday. One person suffered injuries in the crash. LCSO had asked drivers to avoid the area as deputies had to shut down roads in the area during the investigation. It is not clear yet what caused the crash or the extent of injuries. There will be updates as more information becomes available. This is Rachel and A with your World Talk 93.3 Local News Update. Brought to you by Macklemore Systems. Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Trombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Highs level off around 76 this afternoon under partly cloudy skies. East winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Partly cloudy skies tonight. Lows dip down to about 58. Sunshine mixed with clouds at times again tomorrow. Daytime highs approaching 78. Chance for scattered storms Wednesday. Chance for scattered showers on Thursday. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 75. Widden Glass has been taking care of business since 1945. When you call Widden Glass, you're dealing with experienced, reliable professionals who offer only the best. Like Widden's top-of-the-line bath enclosures that provide style and luxury at an affordable price. Eye-catching storefronts are a specialty at Widden Glass. We'll help you design it and install it. Widden Glass, the first name in glass replacement. Call 222-5781. Well, well, well. Hey, Jeff, look at this place. Yeah, My yeah. Goodness. Well, doing well. It's been a while since I've seen you, brother. But, uh, you know, it hasn't been a while since I've been over to Gordo's. I go there on the regular because of you, Eddie. Well, we keep you regular. Well, that's true. But I think of Gordo's as a place to sit down, have a cold beer, talk to your friends, enjoy the sports, eat the delicious food. But I think of you as Uncle Eddie, a man who takes care of his people and takes care of the town. I appreciate that, Jeff. Hey, and we'll keep you regular. Gordo's, bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. Here's what you missed on the Greg Tish Show. Of 97 patients, 33 are vaccinated, and 63% are considered incidental. See, this is what I'm upset about. He's basically made up the percentages to look like it's at 100%, but the two are not related to each other. What's 37% of 97? It's 35.89. So why in the hell can't he literally ask iPhone to do that in his articles? Maybe he's got an Android. The Greg Tish Show, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m., only on Real Talk 93.3. The Jeff Cameron Show is sponsored by the legendary team at Hamilton Home Loans. Great rates, cutting-edge technology, and transparent communication is the recipe for a five-star mortgage experience at fsuhomeloans.com. <laughs>
Croft. We'll uh, get back after it and talk some uh, tackle some Florida State football stuff. And uh, also, by the way, not, the locker room's good, 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 good. I'm so caught up on you know things that aren't aesthetically pleasing and more tangible, such as the X's and O's talent level. Are we going to win games? That sometimes when we get these moments that are help elevate the program, maybe help out in recruiting in some way or another, I'm like, great, great, that's good. The building looks nice. I get straight back to the, are we good enough? Are we going to have enough receivers? Are we, you know, that's kind of where I, my head's at. It's, it's just me personally being wrapped up in results right now. It's like the starship enterprise and the JJ Abrams reboot of the, uh, of star Trek. I was like, man, this, this looks like a spaceship in here, but it's cool. Does that mean we get the all white uniforms with the white helmets? Come on. Say, it yeah. matches the locker room. What are we doing here? Guys love the white on white, baby. Always have. You have to wear those if that's going to be your locker room. Yeah, at least once a year, yeah, you would think. Indeed. Right? Yeah, I would I would hope. And not for USF at noon in 112 degree heat. <laughs> oh, I hope I hope it is so. Um, yeah, so really quickly, I thought of this. I thought you talk about my frustrations. Well, okay, I'm being told to shut the hell up. Let's get into all of it the next hour. All right, Jeff Camperson, 93.3 Real Talk Radio. This is Kyle, service manager from Barano Heating and Air. Schedule an appointment from your mobile device to learn about our total comfort service program. With guaranteed same-day service, 15% off necessary repairs, and $25 berry books to use towards air filters and other products. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Barano Heating and Air. Any day, anytime, anywhere. Online at BaranoAC.com. Florida license, CAC 1816-186. Refreshing and simple. Two words you don't hear many people use to describe their experience going through the process of getting a home loan. That's what puts the Hamilton Home Loans experience in a category all their own. If you're buying or refinancing a home, Hamilton Home Loans will provide a personalized mortgage experience that is dedicated to making the process refreshingly simple. It all begins with an initial consultation with an experienced Hamilton Home Loans advisor to find out what your goals are in order to find the right mortgage to suit your specific needs. Then, your personal home loan advisor will take you through all the steps from application, underwriting, approval, and closing, all the way to the front steps of your new home. Once you've experienced the Hamilton home loan process, you can be a customer for life and never have to pay lender fees again. For first responders, nurses, physician assistants, teachers, active and retired military, ask about the Hamilton for Heroes program. Personalized attention with your needs put first. Now that's refreshingly simple. Find out more at HamiltonHomeLoans.com. That's HamiltonHomeLoans.com. Equal housing lender. NMLS number 200719. Choose hearth and patio for custom fireplaces, maintenance, outdoor grills, kitchens, fire pits, lighting, and so much more. Check out all of hearth and patio's options online at hearthpatiotallahassee.com. Hearth and patio, they keep the home fires burning. This is Patty Wilson. Oh, I'm sorry. We're ready. <laughs> He's recording. I, why are you always saying your last name? It's I don't, Patty and Scott. Everybody I don't knows know that. Patty and Scott. I don't know. Cause this is Patty Wilson. Not this is. I am Patty Wilson. <laughs> What is the idea behind said promo? It's for Patty's Playhouse. We're on Patty's Playhouse Saturdays at 11. Tune in. That's stupid. Just tune in. Saturdays at 11. Patty Wilson, Patty's Playhouse. House talk with a happy ending. Each and every time. <laughs> While other gun stores come and go, Red Hills Arms remains Tallahassee's go-to local gun store for all your firearms needs. At Red Hills Arms, they're right on target. Stop by today and get welcomed in my family. There's fun to be had every night at the Corner Pocket. Take home prizes on Trivia Tuesdays and Beer Bingo Thursdays. And kickstart your weekend with Martini Fridays. Plus, happy hour runs every weekday and game day specials every time the Knolls take the field. Watch all the best games at the Corner Pocket's Vegas Wall. Featuring 560 inches of flat screen TV heaven. Oh, really? The best food, the best drinks, and the best place to watch all the games. Tallahassee loves the Corner Pocket. Coming up next, more of the Jeff Cameron Show, live and local on Real Talk 93.3, WVFT, Greta Tallahassee. News this hour from townhall.com. I'm Jason Walker. Hearings underway for Supreme Court nominee Katanji Brown-Jackson. Democratic Senator Patrick Leahy of Vermont took issue with those who criticized Judge Brown-Jackson for defending terror suspects while she served as a federal public defender. It's not a liability to the court 
It's a much needed asset to the court. Republican Lindsey Graham complained about a double standard in the media when dealing with ethnic minority nominees. So if you're Hispanic or African-American conservative, it's about your philosophy. Now it's going to be about the historic nature of the pick. Graham promised civil hearings, but also warned the nominee to expect some hard questions from Republicans concerned about her judicial philosophy. Bob Agner reporting. The Salem Radio Network, parent company of Town Hall News, working with two major nonprofit organizations to rush food, water, emergency supplies, and medicine to millions of Ukrainian refugees. You can find more information available now at SRN News. Dot com. Also at townhall.com, Britain accusing Russia of being behind hoax calls to a couple of government ministers. British Defence Secretary Ben Wallace says the hoaxer was able to speak to him on a video call last Thursday. And Home Secretary Priti Patel said she'd received a similar call, whereas Culture Secretary Nadim Doris said an unsuccessful attempt was made to speak to her. Wallace says he became suspicious and hung up after the caller posed several misleading questions. Wallace blames Russian disinformation, distortion and dirty tricks for the hoax. Prime Minister Boris Johnson's spokesman Max Blaine says the Russian state was responsible for the calls made to government ministers last week. Charles Duladesma, London. More on these stories at townhall.com. Hi, I'm cute kid number one. And I'm cute kid number two. And we have been forced. You mean hired? We have been hired to tell you what direct lender FOMO is. So let's say you buy a new home and maybe you use one of those big mortgage monsters or someone your realtor or friend recommends. And then a few months later, you hear us being forced, hired, hired to tell you about our mortgage team's direct lender advantage. And then you feel like you missed out because you probably did miss out. And that is direct lender FOMO. It's Ryan, and our mortgage team is an arm of a bigger company who is a direct lender, which means our company gets to use its own money and make its own decisions within its own walls. There's no middleman. This often allows us to get you a better rate on that new home mortgage, saving you monthly and lifelong money. We our United Faith Mortgage. United Faith Mortgage is a DBA of United Mortgage Corp. 25 Middle Park Road, Melbourne, New York. Licensed Mortgage Maker. For all licensing information, go to Animalist Consumer Access. Dot Corporate Animalist Number 1335. Rack Animalist Number 65233. Equal housing lender. I license in Alaska, Hawaii, Georgia, Massachusetts, North Dakota, South Dakota, or Utah. Clean, renewable energy means fresher air, healthier residents, new green jobs, and a stronger, more resilient community. How we get there is up to you. Share your input today to help shape the Tallahassee of tomorrow. Take the clean energy survey at talgov.com. Let's be honest, we all have way too much stuff. Maybe your storage closet is full, your garage is full, or the guest bedroom is a mess. Call Southeast Portable Buildings, 580-6400, or visit them online at southeastportablebuildings.com. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience a more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. Hot! Broadcasting live from Florida's capital city, this is the Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness on Real Talk 93.3. Now, stop what you're doing and listen closely. It's time for the Jeff Cameron Show in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.
the NCAA tournament, uh, as well as NFL free agency, the retirement of the great Gene Deckerhoff, and a mention of Florida State football, because obviously while I was away, no practices. They get back after it this week. Very excited uh, to go out there again this week and get a chance to watch this team grow, compete, uh, and get better. Uh, I do think that there are areas uh, uh, areas on this football team that have to get better. There are areas on this football team that through a very brief stretch of spring practice, I'm convinced will be better. Uh, and I also think there are a lot of conclusions that you can't come to yet. Uh, and that's why we're going to have to watch this play out on and through the spring game and into the fall. Uh, I'm leery of jumping to conclusions just yet. Uh, there's just so much that we can't know and so much more for individuals and others competing for jobs uh, to prove. A couple of these young guys might emerge as guys that not only play, but play significant snaps, significant roles. And uh, if they continue to improve, if they can handle the workload and the pressures, uh, if they can continue to see their confidence grow. There are others that perhaps have surprised us, Tom, guys that maybe I'd written off coming into camp that I thought had shown enough evidence on the field of play as to, to write them off, who are now improving to a place where I realize there might be a role for them. There might be something that they could offer up. Maybe they've responded to the healthy competition. You know, there's nothing like, uh, you know, competition to get your attention. Uh, it's real easy to fall back and to feel like I've proven myself at this spot or whatever it is in any field. I don't have to continue to work in order to improve. There's nobody who's really going to test me here. But when you get more bodies in a position group all desperate for playing time, and others that maybe emerged as uh, a healthier version of themselves, say, uh, than they were at the end of last year, uh, it is the perfect recipe uh, for the kind of push in competition you need to see, uh, preferably with every segment group. But I know in the secondary, that's certainly true. It is uh, one of the fun things that Friday before spring break was, given the weather concerns that week, we were in the IPF again. And so we were able to take in from a, a closer perspective. You could hear the coaching a little bit better as mm -hmm. it's going on. It's just not something that we can necessarily share uh, but it's just it gives you a better idea of did I see that rep right because if I didn't then that coach is either going to berate that player or tell them they didn't do it and so you're looking for confirmation that your eyes are telling you the truth sure but one of the cool things is they wheeled in those video boards that they have at yeah. the end of the practice fields and so as I'm watching the trench drills they will replay what was going on in another part of the field three and four times so in between the reps turn my head over to the video board and you're like okay check here check there look here look there just a lot of information to get uh, to be exposed to. And that's one of the things where I think whether or not media members are FSU grads or not, and we're kind of uh, in the middle, we have a privileged place in the middle where we can be a fan and yet cover the team. Correct. Everybody's rooting for this guy to succeed because of the access we get, you know, on a professional level. It's just amazing the things that we get to see compared to the rest of college football. I know it's the way it used to be when you first started covering Florida State, but it Many is moons not ago. the way anymore. Yeah. So it's a privilege to be able to do that. Looking forward to get back at, on those fields tomorrow. Yeah, I don't disagree. Uh, I think it's exciting. Every day we go out there, there's so much to take in and a lot. You know, I, I tend to try to concentrate. I mean, we, we have certain work responsibilities for War Chant, uh, but I tend to want to concentrate on a specific segment group often and say, okay, today I'm really going to look hard at, say, the defensive line or the offensive line or the receiving court, whatever it might be. And the fact that you have so much access that you can choose to do that, that you're not in a hurried position to try to get a, a percentage of time with each group and thus maybe deriving nothing definitive. This is much better because you can spend a day and say, okay, you know what, today, if I only watch the offensive line very, very closely and I listen to the way Coach Atkins is working with them, and what they're being asked to do, the physical attributes, uh, the strengths and, and or weaknesses of this group, uh, the depth, all of those things. That means that when I come back on Thursday, I can then concentrate on the defensive line or the wide receivers or whatever it might be. That, you're right, is an amazing thing, and it helps provide the kind of context we want to offer you on a regular basis on this show. It gives me a greater basis for the opinion that I give on a daily basis, and then also anything that is written or brought up on warchant.com. So, this is something where you're absolutely right. Having this kind of access because of the way he believes the working relationship between the press and his coaches and players should be is not something to take for granted. Also, winning beats the hell out of losing. 
So the sooner we can get to the winning, <laughs> yeah, the better yeah. off we'll all be, the better mood we'll all be in, the better this community will thrive, et cetera. I can tell you that my assignment on Wednesday and Friday was exactly what you're talking about, the trenches, because full pads were on. They didn't get yeah, shells. It, yeah. went, it went from shorts to, to full pads, and so you're able to assess some things. And I got to tell you, on that defensive line, and it's not because we suck on the O-line, which is great. Like You're not, you're not like, oh, by default, this, this guy's winning because we can't do anything. Mm -hmm. They've got a lot of answers in the interior. They've got real depth there. Uh, the they defensive do. line, they got real depth. Yeah, my fear for this team right now is I don't see an obvious solution for the step back that I believe they're going to take off the edges. I don't see it yet. That is not to say somebody won't emerge or that somebody isn't playing well and showing signs that they're getting better and perhaps will prove themselves capable. I do not believe currently, from what I've seen, that we have a dynamic pass rusher in this group. That's, I think, fair to say at this point. However, so we had a defensive roundtable that was released. You can catch it right now on the front page of warchant.com. The one thing I, I said that positively about the edge rushers in one of the questions was, I can see a floor, though. I was worried I wouldn't see one when I okay. got to practice. Okay. I was I had a fear that this is fundamentally going to be a problem. Even with Jared Verse coming to town, he's got three years to play here. The learning curve could be steep, and he's just not ready to face Power 5 tackle play yet. And maybe that still proves to be true. But with what I've seen from McClendon and Briggs and Verse and some of the other guys, I think that can be patched together to not be a disaster. And I was worried that I would see total disaster on the edges because there was nothing behind the guys that have left. I don't think that's the case. I'm not saying they're going to be dynamic like last year. I'm not saying that they're going to be the heartbeat of the defense like the edge rushers were last year. But what I am saying is I don't think they're completely falling off a cliff. And if you believe like I do that they're better up the middle, they're more deep there. They're better at linebacker and the secondary is going to be better as well. You can absorb it as long as you're not a disaster off the edges. And I don't think they are. Yeah. Um, Golly, it's so funny because we're just talking about various degrees of enthusiasm or perhaps, uh, you know, concern. Because I don't disagree with that assessment either. I just I want to be very careful not to paint a picture of complete desperation while also being incredibly honest and blunt about the fact that I don't see a star off the edge here. I don't at all. And I don't think anybody's going to emerge this year as that star. I don't see it. now. If you're telling me that you think, for example, um, Derek McClendon will emerge as an above average or a plus player off the edge, okay, I, I understand from which that opinion is derived. I may not share it currently, right. but I see where you might believe that that's where he's headed. Well, okay, I, fine. I, I've seen the quicks, enough of the quicks. I thought, oh, whoa, and, and it's been consistent. It's not one day. It's not one rep. Over the course of those first four practices, consistently it was there. Now, the one problem I have, mm -hmm. and, I will, and I will play the devil's advocate to myself here, is I don't know how many tackles we have on this roster. So that's the hard part. I don't know how many bona fide tackles we have. And that's the defensive thing. tackles are offensive, offensive tackles. tackles. Yeah, no, we don't have a lot. Because you're when you're trying to assess a defensive end, you need to know what you have at tackle. You don't have to say you don't know. You know damn well we don't have enough tackles on this roster. I'm not sure yet. I give Alex Atkins enough credit that with a couple of camps and an offseason workout program that maybe Lloyd Willis is ready to play right tackle for us. He's not slide. right now. I wouldn't disagree with that statement. Okay. Okay. Well, and then we're talking honestly amongst each other ah, and to our listeners. But the guy I like. Who? Bless Harris. Oh, I like Bless Harris, but I wanted Bless Harris to come in to add depth, not to be emerging as a potential starter. I mean, listen, you, if that happens, great. But I didn't think he was talented enough from what I looked at that I thought, oh, that guy's going to come in here and play. Like, like, listen, there, when we looked at Caden Lyles, mm -hmm. his game film and his body type, and now we've seen him in person, we say – that dude is a plug-and-play starter for you at center. Right. He is a difference maker. He is adding to what Florida State can be. You're not going to say that, uh, I don't think, about really almost – well, I mean, you, you don't say that about Bless Harris. Well, I think – so here's the thing about Bless. I've, I've just been very impressed by how technical he is already. Mm -hmm. Like He, he came in here huge. <laughs> – Right. Yeah. And he's one of those guys where I can't speak to exactly how the, the drills pan out. It's just we're not allowed to do that. But when he receives instruction, he seems to absorb that very quickly, which is which is reassuring. So, again, it's establishing a bit of a floor. Lloyd Willis has the body to do it. There's no doubt about that. 
And also, this is his first go around to be getting, you know, the kinds of reps that he's likely getting. As Mike Norvell himself said, they're going to work it. This is a huge camp for Lloyd Wills. So that's his own words on the record. You can derive from that what you will. I'm not going to count out Alex Atkins' ability to develop an offensive lineman with that raw bit of clay to mold. I'm not going to discount the chances that maybe by fall camp things are there. I'm just saying right now, I don't know. So that that makes it harder to assess yeah. what we see with a Derek McClendon, for example. But I just I think those quicks play no matter Br- what. Br- Briggs is a good football player. I think yep. Briggs is going to play well this year. I think he's going to be a good plus player for us, uh, and they'll move him around. Uh, I think there is something to, to build off of what you've seen with McClendon. I'm fine with you saying that. I don't think he's a bona fide star edge rusher right now. No, I think he's he's going to be a, a good player, uh, not a great player. Uh, maybe maybe he emerges over time. But right now, Florida State doesn't have anything dynamic off the edges. And Jared Verse has not come in in one week and changed my mind on that. Now, will he get better? I hope so. He's got a lot of time. He hasn't yeah. played a ton of football. This is his first time getting acclimated to here, to this level of athlete. He has seen uh, a, 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 a lot of changes to his football playing career. So I'm going to give him the proper uh, birth here. I'm going to give him uh, time to figure this out. Right now, he's a little too robotic for me. I don't see a natural player off the edge, but it doesn't mean he's not a great athlete or or a very good athlete and a big, strong kid who can get better and better as he learns technique. In my interview with him, which we ran on Warchant.com, he, uh, thanks to Rising Spear, uh, he, by the way, is a guy that uh, that is a, a workaholic. He's a guy that admitted to working on technique. He was already being instructed how to do things differently in terms of hand placement. I think right now when I tell you he's robotic, it's because he's having to think. He's having to think a lot more than he ever has before. When you're playing at Albany and you just beat the bejesus out of somebody physically because you're bigger, stronger, faster, it gets a lot easier to make plays. Now you've got to be technique sound. The thing I'd say about that, though, is, is clearly it's working because he's in the right places and his yeah. leverage, he's not getting yeah. out leveraged. So you're not seeing him in places in the field. And then there's a whistle and a coach yells, where are you going? Where, the hell are you going? where yeah. are you going? Yeah. That, that doesn't happen with that. him. So to me, that that's a good sign that, all right, the building blocks are being laid there. The game is not too fast for him. Even though he's thinking the game is not too fast for him yet to be out of position. That's good. Mm-hmm. That's real good. Cause you never know. It, you get here from one level to another and the game moves so fast that yeah. you're just running around. You don't know where you're going. He looks like he is assimilating the information very well. Same thing with Bless. Again, Bless isn't as strong as maybe a Lloyd Willis, but you just watch the efficiency of his movements. I'm starting to feel better about certain positions to where you might be able to absorb one bump or bruise from week to week, and you say, oh, no. like last year, if Gibbons wasn't playing, we're screwed. You know, he just felt like that. If oh, he wasn't starting, well, we're screwed. You, and you were. Right, and DLT wasn't available the whole year, so you're already kind of starting behind the eight ball. I think they can absorb a couple of those this year. I think they're building to a place where it's not dead on arrival if you don't have X player on in your front four or in your starting five of the offensive line. Let's address something here because it's going to come up, and it came up uh, in my travels. As I got back to town, I was kind of trying to assess anything I may have missed. Uh, do we have, and, and forgive me if we do, because I was trying to catch up with a lot of different things to address on the show today. West Virginia's Winston Wright transfer wide receiver here, who we saw obviously in camp that first week, involved in a car crash. We know that, right? That is that is public knowledge. Uh, not not a crash of, of his making necessarily from what I understand, but rather one that in which there may have been, knock on wood, no serious injuries, but there may have been an injury to him. I don't know that. Have we gotten confirmation, further confirmation than what I learned late last night before coming in today? I could tell you what we share what we shared on the website okay. and on the boards. Fair and by we I mean Gene has been at the forefront on this. We don't have confirmation about the severity of the injury but it's severe enough that his season is in jeopardy. Yeah, that's a devastating turn of events. Now, to not be that guy and to not be crass, first and foremost, I hope everybody involved in the accident obviously is okay and is going to have a full recovery and is going to be able to go on and live their lives and and, and pursue whatever it is that they, they dream to do. But as it pertains to the football, having said that, this was the plug-and-play answer at wide receiver that you brought in from West Virginia, his experience in the power five, his proven experience at this level playing at a high level was the boon of the off season and getting that guy to a receiving core that lacked the uh, refined nature of his route running and catching in game. 
that lacked depth of talent, that lacked explosiveness, that lacked uh, know-how and ability. So losing him, if in fact they have, is nothing short of devastating. And there's no way to sugarcoat that if that's true. And by the way, again, if that's true, I hope the young man, obviously above and beyond what I want for our football teams, uh, I want team. I want him to make a full recovery and, be, and, and have a chance to pursue his dreams. What I am saying is that if we're just being pragmatic here and we're not talking about life, but football, rather just football, this that sucks. That's incredibly unlucky and it's devastating. And I think it means that if that's true, they're going to have to maybe go out and get yet another receiver as we go into the fall. Now, I find that interesting. I agree with you. You want to have an abundance of answers yes. rather than, you know, one singular answer. And, well, and, and you answers from, from a game, Tom, from games, not yeah. practice, right. games. Right. What I'll tell you is I believe now after one week, granted, again, it's only one week it's of one spring week. camp and it's two days of pads. Right, and you want to get excited about Ja'Kai Douglas and Pokey Wilson and, and well, Pittman. Portier and Pittman. And Pittman and Ja'Kai over the middle, I think I think are okay. And, and I, I think they're better than okay. They're better than it was last year already, already. So I think you can absorb it more than I would have assumed before we walked onto that practice field. But you would like to be able to have those guys and Winston Wright. Wouldn't that be nice? But, and also, <laughs> Winston in the special teams kick return game was excellent, too. So I think they've got more answers. The receiving core has responded. I think you would agree with that. I mean, you, you mentioned it when you were speaking generally about your observations from week one. Oh, maybe there are some guys I had written off. I, the receiving core qualifies under that category for me. Portier or yep. it, it has had a good week. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> You're discounting more. Okay, no, no, no. I'm not. What I'm saying is that I don't think we can make a definitive statement that they've improved to a place that you feel comfortable when the games start against LSU and Miami and Florida and all these other teams we have to beat to have a good season. We don't know that. They, they look like they're practicing hard. They're, they're, they're obviously well aware of the competition that has been the, the bar has been raised and they have to they have to find their way to obviously a better place than they were at the end of last year in order to get on the field but the amount of the competition that we talk about and the and the, the the depth and the battle and all that that we talk about on a daily basis that makes everybody better takes a massive hit if Winston Wright is out and that guy was a guy that I wasn't even – I didn't care if he played two minutes in the spring game. I didn't care if he just slowly worked his way into learning the offense and because he's a proven game day commodity. They're, damn it, man. I can't, Again, that is a devastating loss if it's true. And I'm not telling you he's Jerry Rice. I'm saying that what we don't have, he was providing. Game experience in the Power Five playing at a high level. There's no way to sugarcoat that you lose that guy and it's going to be okay because a couple of other guys are playing a little bit better in the first week of spring. There's just no way. I'm not saying you were trying to do that. I'm just saying there's no way around it. And it's, I'm just mad. I, it's, it's one of those times where I say, <laughs> Mike Norvell has to be asking the football gods, what WTF, fellas? What do I have to do every damn time? I mean, it's ridiculous. Sorry. Jeff Cameron, Show 93.3 Real Talk Radio and War Chant TV. People trust sellers for better tile, carpet, and hardwood flooring. Sellers Flooring Advisor Ryan Fitzgerald. We understand most people don't come in with great knowledge of what they're looking for or what they need. So at Sellers, what we try to do is use our expertise to guide you through the process. Get sellers working for you. We make it easy, and we have the experts on staff to get you where you need to be, and we give you the option. On Capital Circle Northeast, just north of Mayhan Drive, call 656-8453. Online at sellerstile.com. Another check from Northern Florida? Yes, Your Majesty. And may I ask why we get it? It's from one of our businesses in the States, a pest control company. Oh, and what do we know about pests in Northern Florida? Absolutely nothing. Did you know that most pest and termite companies that serve Tallahassee are actually owned and operated by people that don't even live in our area? One owner is actually in Great Britain. Paul's Termite and Pest Control was founded in North Florida, 
operates in North Florida and services North Florida. All of Paul's decisions and treatments plus prevention methods are centered around the unique needs of our wonderful part of the world. Being local really does matter in our industry. Don't trust the health of your family to companies that aren't even on our continent. Protect your biggest investment from termites and your family and pets from pests with a company with the local advantage, Paul's Termite and Pest Control. And remember, Paul's keeps North Florida lawns green, too. For the elimination of termites and other pests. And a greener lawn, too. Call Paul's. We'll get them all. Well, he was a fly swatter. I believe we do. When you need a plumber quick, how long is an acceptable time to have to wait? Uh, yeah, hey, it's the Millers again. I'm just calling you about our little plumbing problem. Two hours? Hey, uh, we were hoping you get here soon because the water is getting really bad. I mean, it's... Please hurry. Four hours? Yeah, I know you said you were on your way, but, uh, honey, tell the kids to drink water. Eight hours? Don't worry about us. We're fine. At m &L Plumbing, you'll never have to wait long for quality, dependable service right when you need it. At m l Plumbing, we listen to our customers and our qualified technicians aim to achieve 100% customer satisfaction. So the next time you need plumbing work or repairs, think of the name m l Plumbing, your local plumbing experts, commercial or residential. Give us a call, 850-575-9393 or visit us online at mnlplumbing.com. m l Plumbing, for all of your plumbing needs. I'm Joel Clark, a select quote agent with a true story that could save you hundreds of dollars a year. A woman named Linda just called. Her husband, Ray, has a group life insurance policy, but is changing jobs and he can't take it with him. Well, I went to work and found Ray, who's 40 and takes medication to control his high blood pressure, a 10-year, $500,000 policy for only $19 a month. That's way more coverage for a lot less than what he was paying. If select quote didn't shop for your life insurance, you're probably paying too much. For your free quote and to find out how much you can save, call 1-800-597-2010. That's 1-800-597-2010. 1-800-597-2010. Or go to selectquote.com. Since 1985, we shop. You save. Get full details on the example policies at selectquote.com slash commercials. Your premium could vary depending on your health, issuing company, and other factors. Not available in all states. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. The Jammin Show is a production of the Warchant.com Multimedia Network. Check out Warchant.com today for the latest news inside Florida State Athletics. That's Warchant.com. Now, back to Jeff on Real Talk 93.3. Who asked a question on the uh, chat board here for War Chant TV? Very honest question, Jeff and Tom. What you know about Bless Harris? Yeah, uh, I've had fun with that phrasing. Um, well, okay, so we were talking about Bless Harris a moment ago. I I thought when we brought him in, based on what I could see of him, that this was a guy that is going to give you a lot of size. Um, he's a decent uh, in terms of bend and footwork uh, athlete uh, for the position. And that I I was hoping he infused depth. Uh, he may end up having to play more than we want. Uh, we'll see. Uh, but I think it's not a miss. So the point would be that that was a good pickup for us. It was a good choice to bring Bless Harris to the team is what I'll tell you about uh, Bless Harris. That's what we know about Bless Harris. It's too early. Let's find out. What, you know, Let's watch the rest of camp. Let's see what how he does in the fall. Right now, he looks like that was a good pickup. Uh, I want to address something else here that was uh, brought up by Briley. In my opinion, Jeff's a bit too high on right and thereby taking his development a bit too this development a bit too hard. We hadn't even seen right on the field yet due to some other injury. He wasn't a known commodity for us. No, but he was a known commodity in the world of power five college football. 
and you had seen him play at West Virginia uh, to a place where he was more accomplished than anybody else we had in the receiving core, our receiving core. The idea that, you know, in my mind, that experience and talent at that level, proven talent at that level, was coming here uh, was huge to me because my thought was it will only take time for him to go ahead and learn the playbook. We probably won't see much of him in the spring, nursing an injury, learning the playbook, but he's the guy that needs the reps the least. He's the guy that doesn't need to be out there um, because he is an experienced and accomplished college football wide receiver at the power five level. I don't think there's any way to underestimate how he would have added to the depth of talent in this group. I mean, this was a group that is seriously lacking. I don't know. I'm not trying to suggest he would have been a star here. I am trying to suggest that we do a good job of putting our receivers in one-on-one -on -one situations. He's proven to make plays in those situations in a way that nobody else on our roster has. So to lose him is potentially devastating. Uh, no, I, I, no, I, I don't think you can overstate how big a hit that is to lose a guy with that experience and talent. I'm not telling you he's Jerry Rice. I'm just telling you he's a guy that has accomplished something at the Power Five level at the position we need it most that nobody else on this roster has. The thing I'd say is if you have answers on the outside this year in a way you didn't before, which Johnny Wilson could go a long way in, in helping with that and the development of Malik McClain or some of the other guys, and you put Ja'Kai in the slot, there's something there. Plus, there's a synergy there between the starting quarterback and that particular player. They like each other. Don't mistake me pointing out that the potential loss, only potential loss of Winston Wright uh, is devastating. Don't equate that with me, and I don't mean you, I mean our listeners, with me thinking there's no chance for this group to be much better than they were a year ago. To the degree that they could be much better, they, they take a huge hit, yes. But can they be? Oh, they can be better for, uh, for a lot of reasons. The offensive line is going to be better. He's got more time to throw. The maturation of the quarterback, it's his job. He knows that he's not really competing with anybody for that job. The confidence level in which he's playing is going to be sky high right now because of all that and that development towards the end of the year. The emergence of certain guys that are already on this roster is a distinct possibility. But when it comes to a guy like Wilson, who you just referenced, we are hoping that the flashes we see through one week of spring practice translates into a game against bona fide competition. Do we know that's going to happen? Do we believe it's going to happen? Do we know it's going to happen? Is that something that's a certainty? Man, we can't know that. We can't possibly know that. He's never done it. When you he, we, At Arizona State, he was a primarily a blocker when he was in there. He has, what, 12 catches? I mean, is that right? I, mean, I, yeah. I don't think it's many. Um, it's not. So the one thing I'd say to that is it's kind of like uh, Corey's commentary from early on. I think it was maybe practice one or practice two, which, again, it's not in full pads. But he says, I don't know what it's going to translate to in the fall, which I we don't. Well, here's what I do know. There were never contested catches made by receivers last year in this certain circumstance or yeah. these specific days, and, and there were never times where they won in – one-on-one -on -one opportunities with pads on. and Yeah, went, they weren't very good last year. They went and ran down footballs, and they went and snagged the ball out of the air rather than letting it hit them in the chest you know, the chest pad or whatever. Um, and that's true. That that much is true. They are winning some battles early on in practice, more so than they did last year. So you have hope because you feel like, okay, if we're starting from a different baseline from where we were this time last year, then wouldn't it stand to reason that you might see a little bit more production when you get into the fall? But admittedly, that's we only don't know. one week. Yeah, we don't know, and we'll have to wait and see. Uh, I, I, I hate it for the young man, and I hate it for this receiving core, and I hate it for Mike Norvell and his staff, uh, and I hate it for Jordan Travis, who you know obviously needs more weapons in order to emerge and become a better and more consistent quarterback throwing the football. We, we know he can run. He's an elite runner. We know he can make people miss in a phone booth. That's great. He'll always utilize that skill to his benefit. It becomes all the greater a skill and asset if you're able to consistently throw the ball to guys that can get open and make plays. They don't necessarily have a proven guy. Winston Wright was a proven guy to do that. That's why I'm pissed. And it's, you know, again, I'm not overlooking the the potential injuries that he may have so I don't know what he's suffered uh if he's out for the year obviously it's it's some sort of significant injury if in fact he's out for the year we don't know that that's still speculative yeah, at this still point still speculative right 
And I care more, obviously, that a person be healthy for their own sake and their own life. I'm just saying we're here to talk about this football team and the depth of the football team and whether or not they're going to be any good. And when we do that, we have to assess what that injury or any injury, for that matter, means to a team. So it's not being callous. It's just pointing out that that potentially sucks in a way that is so aggravating because what else would befell this team and this coaching staff? Um, it, it's been a lot. It's been a lot, Tom. It's been a lot. And it just, God, dog it, man. Maybe you'll feel better this week when you get to watch Bless Harris in, in the reps he's running. You know, 58. Watch 58. It'll make you feel a little bit better. All right. All yeah. right, Bless. That's what I want to hear that this week when, we, when we're in observation times. All right. I see you, 58. <laughs> <laughs> all right t lizzie all right there's a little uh, something there i hope so i hope so i think um there are aspects of the team and and again we didn't get a chance to really sit down and talk a lot before i left before spring break hit us before we all departed for a week apart um to talk about some of the things that even though it has been all of a week that we feel really good about and one of those things without question would be uh is there a thomas who, man, all right, yeah, man, that's the real deal right there. That I'm excited about. Sam McCall. Yep. Oh yeah, McCall. Yeah, McCall when the pads came oh, on, got better. Oh, you're like, okay, yep. yeah. There's a little, there's a little something, something right here. There's a whole lot of what for to both those guys to go along with physical tools and really, especially as it pertains to Thomas, just a silky smooth way in which that man comports himself. That is that guy right there is a confident athlete who moves almost like he's gliding through the air. I don't think he's a magical human being. I'm just saying everything about the level of athleticism evident from the first time you watched it. Wait, you see him walk on the puddles at Dick Hazard Stadium. <laughs> there was some, They're everywhere. There were some times at the end of uh, Friday's practice or, or during individual drills, you go, ooh, he's, you got taught a lesson there. So there is a bit of a learning curve, yeah. but that clay to work with, once again, to use that term, that metaphor, it is the kind of clay we're used to seeing here at Florida State. Back in the day, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah Between him and McCall. And McCall's got a little bit more violence to his game. E everything about the way he plays it, just he's a little bit more choppy. Whereas uh, Azaria Thomas looks like almost, you know, one of those smooth safeties. And Neither then, one of them lack confidence. Correct. And That's good. Big, oh, you're playing a position where you can't. So good. Good, good, good to see that. That came with them. They walked off that yeah. high school field and onto a college football practice field with a whole lot of get you some. And if you add to the amount of players who have a nose for the football in the secondary, I mean, mm -hmm. that changes games. You, you could play like junk. And win the turnover battle three to one and win the football game. And and who are we to complain about that right now in Tallahassee? But you gotta have guys who have a nose for the football. Jermaine Johnson did from the defensive line. Mm. Unbelievable nose for the football. But how about some more guys in the secondary that can do it? It helped change the course of the Miami game. That whole first half is predicated on turnovers. Yeah, and they play and they were playing so confidently. And that came that emerged almost out of thin yeah. air. It was yep. amazing to watch. Uh really quickly, Tatum Bethune looks the part. So yeah. a linebacking core that needed to get deeper and better, I think, is going to be definitively. I think I can say that with a degree of certainty that I can't apply to many other positions, that that I know, as long as he's healthy, that that group got deeper and better. Are you worried about coverage, though? I still yeah. am. Yeah, well, of course. Yeah. yeah. We don't have an so, overabundance of guys that can cover at that position. Right. Luckily, so, there are only two of them out there on the field. It's about the diagnosing, time. making plays mm -hmm. at or near the line of scrimmage versus covering in space. Like They could be better. Deloach was better Deloach at it by, was the a end lot of the, better yeah. by the end of the year. He was but a lot better. I'm still nervous about that because you could do everything right. And if you've got, I mean, we know this all too well the last few years, you could do everything right everywhere else. But if you've got like a 10 yard window over the middle of the field, because we don't understand what we're doing pre-snap and linebacker. I hope that that's better with Bethune. You got a, a healthier, slim down, faster DJ Lundy. He's still never going to be great in coverage. Deloach emerged as a viable plus linebacker at the power five level. At the end of last year, you bring in production in Tatum Bethune that Florida State doesn't have on the roster at the position. It tells me that in addition to, to those guys getting better, looking better, playing better, you are creating competition that should make Amari Gaynor tougher and better as well. Not in coverage, but on the whole, I think there it is. I got it in. Um, a better, a better player. And here there was a whole lot of red ass to him uh last week, the week before. Uh, when we were out there at practice, he understands that in order to get on the field and get the reps that he wants and he thinks he should have, he's going to have to play well. He's going to have to play hard. He's going to have to be physical. 
and he was very physical in the practices I was at. So, okay, that group probably better. We love the interior of the defensive line. Love better it. up the middle. So there we go. We feel good about the secondary. The only concern we have, again, I think, non-depth related, is pass rush one, off the edge. One thing I'll say about linebackers real quick, and, and this is not to throw too much hype because it's once in a while. But every once in a while, freshman Omar Graham has made a couple plays in spring. Oh, yeah, there oh it is. okay. Okay. Now, he's not being asked to do a lot, as you would imagine. He is acclimating to the game. But it's nice to see. We've had a lot of guys over a lot of camps, spring and fall alike, that are highly touted linebacker recruits, make their way to Tallahassee. And by week two, you forgot that they're even on the roster. They don't give you a reason to say, hey, who is that again? Let me look up that number. Well, Omar Graham's been okay a couple of times. Long term, long term, but maybe he's an answer down the line, not necessarily this year. The mortgage process can be intimidating for all, but it doesn't have to be, and not when you call my friends at Hamilton Home Loans. Chad and Shannon, the legendary team, I should say, the legendary team, Chad and Shannon, at Hamilton Home Loans will take your call and make it oh so easy, a wonderful opportunity to see how simplistic, straightforward, and successful your experience getting a home loan can be. Great rates, cutting-edge technology, transparent communication. It is a five-star mortgage experience. You're going to get a different kind of mortgage experience with these guys, Chad and Shannon, especially if you mentioned the Jeff Cameron show. We welcomed him in a few weeks back. It's great to be partnered with him. Uh, and uh, you know what? You're going to want to partner with him, too, if that's what you're looking for right now. Find my friends legendary home team at Hamilton Home Loans, legendary team, Chad and Shannon, I should say. FSUHomeLoans.com makes it very, very simple. Online at FSUHomeLoans.com. Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio and War Chant TV. Your local news now. Attorney General Ashley Moody issued a consumer alert to warn state residents of a new scam. On March 6, Patrol Master Trooper Tony Shuck saved several individuals when a drunk driver sped 70 miles an hour down a path headed towards runners in a 10K race in St. Petersburg. Trooper Shuck drove a patrol car in front of the speeding driver protecting the runners. She's now recovering from the crash. Two fake GoFundMe campaigns were created posing as a way to raise funds. FHP announced there are no authorized online fundraisers connected to the crash and the accounts have since been removed. A male driver was rushed to the Tallahassee Memorial Hospital Saturday night after sustaining serious injuries. The crash happened at 11.30 p.m. on Edenfield Road, located off U.S. Highway 90 in Leon County, where the vehicle left the road, collided into a power pole, numerous signposts, and two large standing trees. The driver of the vehicle was ejected from the vehicle prior to coming to arrest. This is Rachel Lene with your Real Talk 93.3 Local News Update, brought to you by Macklemore Systems, Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Trombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Highs level off around 76 this afternoon. Under partly cloudy skies, east winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Partly cloudy skies tonight, lows dip down to about 58. Sunshine mixed with clouds at times again tomorrow. Daytime highs approaching 78. Chance for scattered storms Wednesday. Chance for scattered showers on Thursday. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 76. What do you need tires on? Your car or truck? Tractor or heavy equipment? At Nice Tire and Auto Service, we have tires for all these needs. And we service your vehicle from air conditioning and computerized alignment to oil changes and everything else under the hood. Call Nice Tire and Auto today at 574-4100. That's 574-4100 for your scheduled maintenance. National accounts welcome at Nice Tire and Auto Service. 4792 Blunstown Highway, just west of Capitol Circle. Well, well, well. Hey, Jeff, look at this place. Yeah, My yeah, goodness. well, doing well. It's been a while since I've seen you, brother, but, uh, you know, it hasn't been a while since I've been over to Gordo's. I go there on the regular because of you, Eddie. Well, we keep you regular. Well, that's true, but I think of Gordo's as a place to sit down, have a cold beer, talk to your friends, enjoy the sports, eat the delicious food, but I think of you as Uncle Eddie, a man who takes care of his people and takes care of the town. I appreciate that, Jeff. Hey, and we'll keep you regular. Gordo's, bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. We have Ben Shapiro. In some ways, the worst thing that has happened to Biden is the fact that Republicans blew both of those Georgia Senate races. Because now, there's been an actual ask made of Democrats. If Mitch McConnell were running the Senate, we all know this would be DOA. But because his mansion in cinema, it's put Biden in a box of his own making. Because he is not pursuing anything remotely like a moderate policy. 
Ben Shapiro. Weekdays from 3 to 5 p.m. on Tallahassee's Real Talk Station. Real Talk 93.3. Show brought to you by. on with the NFL and free agency. I setting ourselves up for a long off season, Tom. Oh, I'm, I'm so excited. There's so much go comings and goings and things happening and reason to be excited. I'll tell you what, if you wanted further proof to uh, pivot here from Florida State football for a second, for years, uh, I have described the National Football League and Tom and I have had many a discussion in which we played the role of GM. Um, it's a league of mercenaries. It is a league of mercenaries. You hear me say it time and again, a league of mercenaries. This offseason and the quarterback carousel, where you have a ton of notable veterans moving on to new teams. Carson Wentz dealt to Washington. I don't know what Washington's doing. I think I would feel bereft of hope if I were in Washington. I don't think Carson Wentz can play, so I don't know why they would do that, but they did. Russell Wilson going to the Broncos. Um I'm, you mean Mr. Unlimited. Uh, so Russell Wilson and his fake plastic, shallow, weird self going to the Broncos. Uh, Deshaun Watson going to the Browns. And, you know, the guaranteed money in that deal is the proof positive of which I speak that it is a league of mercenaries. As long as you're not going to jail regardless of what you're accused of, can be proved, can't be proved, is true, not true. We don't know, obviously, all of that. It doesn't really matter the PR hit any team is going to take for signing a football player, in particular a quarterback, especially a good one. If you can play, you're going to get signed, and you're going to remain rich, and it doesn't matter what is said about you as long as it's not provable. That is the league in a nutshell. Cleveland just said to the world, we don't care about your feelings, your thoughts, or what you think Deshaun Watson did or is or might have done. We care about winning. And Baker Mayfield sucks, and we know it. So we've decided to move on from Baker Mayfield for the sole reason that Deshaun Watson's available and somebody's going to sign his ass. So we might as well because it has been eons eons since we've been any good at all at the position and so they said screw it we're doing it we'll take the hit and the hit they'll take it's already happened for the last 72 hours it's been one article the other after the others talking about how heinous it is that a team would sign him but you know as well as i do in a league of mercenaries they don't care i don't think it's got a chance to succeed though like who's gonna want? To, who's gonna go flock there? Because he could still be suspended. Oh, he will so, be suspended. That's why he's gonna whittle down that first year salary to a million dollars. Right. All that guaranteed is on the back end right. of this deal. All that stuff, man. No. But that organization went on the well. They didn't go on the record. Let me ask but you they, something. They I'm ran to Chris you. Mortensen real quick, yeah. and they said that they want quote, a flyer an adult end quote at quarterback. That's what I said last week. They want an adult <laughs> quote unquote. Okay. After Baker Mayfield's tweet through Instagram yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So this is the adult you seek? Because all of that is okay. a sham. It's all nonsense. You know that in the League of Mercenaries. Of it's all chatter. I'll tell you this much. Two rivals. Pittsburgh Steelers and the Cleveland Browns are arch rivals. They hate each other, blah, blah, blah. Their fan bases can't stand each other. One's been uber successful, one of the most successful franchises in the history of the league. The other, not so much. The antithesis, the one right? moved away. Okay. And then one when they moved away. Uh, yeah. Okay. So then here you go. Who's happier today? Cleveland or Pittsburgh, the Steelers who signed Mitch Trubisky or the Cleveland Browns who brought in Deshaun Watson. I guarantee you every Brown fan in the world is chuckling. They don't care at all about what that looks like, and it doesn't look good. Who cares? It's a league of mercenaries, always has been. They don't care. Those GMs don't care. Those fans who pretend like they care when the wrong team signs a guy that's going to kick their team's ass, oh, yeah, they get really high and mighty. But when, when their team signs the guy, they're like, you know, listen, somebody was going to sign him. I mean, I, what are we supposed to do? We're trying to win championships around here. I mean, somebody's going to bring him in. But 
the way that they botched this is just like sevenfold because they were told they were out of the running clearly. So you could see what the way this happened. Yeah. They were told they're out of the running and there was a better offer on the table from, I'm assuming Carolina. That's the group I would think they could bring the most money to the table. I know that three teams in the NFC South were, were vying for Deshaun Watson services, but Carolina had the most money. So they decided to make this guy the most paid dude ever in terms of guarantees. That's what they had to do because they knew that they were out of leverage. And so the answer was, okay, well, whatever Carolina did, we're just going to up it by $8 million a year. They had to go so far above and beyond to get a yes out of that camp. As a diehard Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan, I'm so proud of the Cleveland Browns. Well done. Well done. No need for Deshaun Watson to sign with the Falcons or the Carolina Panthers. Yeah, that's true. You go ahead and take it on over to the AFC where you can't win the division. You can't probably, well, you might win the division. You're not going to go to the Super Bowl anytime soon. So there, there you were go. four locations he could go. Three were in the NFC South. He went to the fourth. Yeah, I hear you. Mm -hmm. By the way, Jameis Winston will get a job, Gregory, and he'll get a job soon. He's either going to sign back with the Saints, which I think is their best option at this point, uh, or he's certainly free to maybe go to Atlanta or wherever it might be that Carolina. he wants to go. Carolina, yeah. he could remain in the NFC South. Uh, the, we are running out of places, uh, but but he'll get a job because he played decently well. Jameis was a Seattle. Maybe. I mean, if I'm looking at, if I'm Seattle, I'm looking at two guys. Okay. There's two guys that I would look at right now for the roster that I have and the kind of football that I, that Pete Carroll wants to play. Now it was driving him nuts that Russell Wilson decided that every play had to involve him extending the play by an extra three seconds and running around. Um, if I want a guy who's going to run a run first offense, we're going to throw off a play action. We're going to play great defense. Then I might look at both Jameis Winston and the aforementioned Baker Mayfield, because right now they don't really have an option. So maybe if you if you don't ask Baker Mayfield to win you games, he could be serviceable. He's a middle tier quarterback. But Jameis could do that for you with DK. Yeah, I, I and Baldwin. And, you know they've got some targets to throw to, and you'd like to get the ball to them. So I think that James would be my argument for James. I think James yeah. is the more talented player. I'm just my point is I'd look at one of those two guys. I'm, I'm saying okay, look, I don't I don't want you to go win the game. In fact philosophically he has said now that he does and listen there was there was clear regression from russell wilson he he is not the player he was when they won the super bowl he's when more they won limited bowl, he's yeah. much more limited and he's also a pain in the ass he's also more talented than both those guys he's jacked and he's in good shape but he's, he's gotten kind of chunky too he's, little... he's also gotten kind of crazy yeah i mean he's not oh that is... he's disingenuous no no gone crazier than he already was he is beyond that yes. we know that i know but but you remember our conversation, which I mean, it just was spot on with the Gruden's quarterback camp when it first debuted yeah. years and years mm -hmm. ago. And I said the one thing about him because I love we both we loved both him. loved him coming out of college. Tampa, go get him. Kind yeah, of thing. we wanted him. Yeah, he's got a glossy overlook in his eyes, man. The far it makes away me fitness. nervous. Yeah, yeah, it makes me nervous. Like he's not really there. Well, that was spot on. Who knew? We were also spot on with our assessment of how good a quarterback oh, he absolutely. Could be. Yeah, That's what yeah, it yeah, was. Yeah, dead yeah, on. Yeah, we knew who he was. A strange cat. I know we got to come back and wrap this up. I got to get Just this commercial. Just Jimmy Clausen really couldn't play. <laughs> that was obvious. And I said Baker Mayfield couldn't play. That's right about that. Jeff Carey, Show 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. What's important when shopping at a gun store? Let's start with a friendly and knowledgeable staff. Then add top-notch service, great selection and pricing, and a personal shopping experience only found at a locally owned and operated business. At Red Hills Arms, they're right on target. While other gun stores come and go, Red Hills Arms remains Tallahassee's go-to local gun store for all your firearms needs. Stop by today and get welcomed in my family. Our friends at ISF work hard to help their clients solve the future. ISF is an integrated IT and management consulting firm located right here in Tallahassee, serving clients all across the country. With the new year upon us, ISF reminds you to create a clear strategy, optimize your process, and modernize your technology to meet all your goals in 2022. For more information, visit ISF.com. That's ISF.com. ISF, solving the future. 
At Epps Decorating Center, we're your locally owned Benjamin Moore retailer. We're your store for quality with brilliant and durable paints in a variety of sheens and thousands of colors. We're your store for service with one-on-one -on -one advice for contractors and homeowners. We're your local experts, and we're here to help with all your painting projects. Benjamin Moore, available at Epps Decorating Center with two locations in Tallahassee. Find a store near you and visit EppsDecorating.com. That's EppsDecorating.com. Tallahassee's 30-year-old funny paper and American Legion Post 13 have joined forces to become major morale. The new ragazine has four more pages of post activities and military information that you probably never knew. But don't worry, it's still as politically correct and newsworthy as always. Okay, it's the same funny stuff, but it's still only available at the sponsors' locations like Tallahassee Automobile Museum, Krispy Kreme Donuts, Keith Lawson Services, or ABC Flooring. Tallahassee's leading supplier of in-stock, top-of-the-line ceramic, carpet, waterproof, and hardwood floors since 1990. At ABC Flooring, you can pick out your floor and installation can begin in 48 hours. ABC Flooring is also the leading supplier of in-stock landlord property management products in the Panhandle. Visit their warehouse showroom on Capitol Circle Southeast or call 877-6600. There's fun to be had every night at the Corner Pocket. Take home prizes on Trivia Tuesdays and Beer Bingo Thursdays. And kickstart your weekend with Martini Fridays. Plus, happy hour runs every weekday and game day specials every time the Knolls take the field. Watch all the best games at the Corner Pocket's Vegas Wall. Featuring 560 inches of flat screen TV heaven. Oh, really? The best food, the best drinks, and the best place to watch all the games. Tallahassee loves the Corner Pocket. Show brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness, two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. We get to welcome back an all time bit, one we love. And we say thank you to our friends from North Florida Payroll Services. Before I do it, fire away. It's time for how you say with the pitching uh, probables. Boom. Probables brought to you by North Florida Payroll Services, locally owned for nearly 15 years, offering payroll and HR services, including full online app onboarding and integration into payroll. Save your company money. Head, head headaches today. To NorthFordaPayroll.com. Bam. What? We got probables. Woo Pirates lead the uh, Rays 5-1. to one. Get you some time. Anyhow, those starters were Zach Thompson and Jalen Beeks. Blue Jays, Tigers, bottom of the sixth. Alec Manoa and Matt Manning. Twins, Orioles, Chi-Chi Rodriguez and Tyler Wells, bottom of the fifth. Braves, Red Sox. Tukey! Toussaint, starting for the Braves. Michael Waka for the Red Sox. They're in the bottom of the sixth. These games have already started. It's fun. Max Scherzer. And the New York Mets. Wait, wait, wait. Who does he pitch for? The New York Mets. We got him? Oh, my God. Marlins, Elsier Hernandez. Phillies, Yankees. Director Matthew, is this Hans Kraus? How do you say his name? Hans Kraus. Oh, man. Hans. Please make the roster. Is he going to make it? Uh, he's got an ERA of oh. over 40 currently. No, no. no. Jameson Tyon starting for the Yankees. Reds, Cubs today. Oh, Graham, hello, Hans. Graham Ashcroft. Keegan Thompson. Graham Ashcroft? That's a man's name. He's at a club near you. Rangers Guardians. That's right, the Guardians of Cleveland. Taylor Hearn and Logan Allen. Dodgers White Sox. Can we all collectively say screw the Dodgers? Andre Jackson, Tanner Banks. Royals Angels, Brady Singer. Shohei Otani. Let's say his name again. Rockies Padres, Ryan Rollison and Yu Darvish. Mariners D-backs, Kirby, Castellanos, and there's a drive from Castellanos. Cards, Nats, Steven Matz. This may be my last time wearing the headset. There's a drive of Castellanos. Eric Feeney and Brewers, Giants, Adrian Hauser, Alex Wood. And that is a look at those that shall raise out of the bump. times all right welcome back probables graham ashcroft 
that dude gets a sponsor exemption and he's a two handicap. That's who Graham <laughs> Ashcroft is. Graham Ashcroft. Nice to meet you, Graham. I can tell already your parents suck. I actually know a Graham. He's not a bad guy. I'm not saying Graham is the problem. But Graham Ashcroft. Graham Ashcroft is a deadly combination that reeks of entitlement. Good work out of you. Good work, Matthew. Be well, everybody. Have a great day. Good to be back with you. We'll talk to you.